Good evening, everyone. Looking forward to the day, day two of our preparation for Feast of Trumpets, where we will see Jesus coming in the clouds. Oh, what a wonderful day that will be to see every one of you there with Jesus. Yeah, but our focus should be Jesus and nothing else. So much is going on in, the, uh, in this world uh, is just mind-boggling. This world is intrinsic evil, and I can feel the weight in my spirit, and today is just the way I feel. Uh, yesterday it was good day, but today I just feel heavy in the spirit. But the Bible said, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Why was Moses not allowed to enter the promised land? Uh, that is a very good question and something that really bothered me for a long time. And it should bother uh, everyone else as well. Why was Moses not allowed to enter the promised land? And Moses was a good leader. He was God's prophet. He was God's, God's spokesman for Israel in that time. But why was Moses not allowed to enter the promised land? Moses missed the promised land because he misrepresented the nature and character of God. Do we as the bride have his nature? And that is the question I want to address to each and every one tonight. Do we present the nature and character of God? Do we represent the nature and character of God when we uh, argue? When we, uh, yeah, that's a lot of a very good question, but in Deuteronomy 32 verse 51 to God gives the reason that Moses was not permitted to enter the promised land. This is because you broke faith with me in the presence of Israelites at the water of Meribah Kadesh in the desert of Zin, and because you did not uphold my holiness among the Israelites. Therefore you will see the land only from a distance. You will not enter the land I am giving to the people of Israel. And God was true to his promise in that way. He showed Moses the promised land, but he did not enter into uh, it. Now this incident at the waters of Meribah, Kadesh, is recorded in Numbers 20. Nearing the end of the 40 years, and uh, interesting, we are now in a 40 days preparation. 40 is very important. It's a number of testing. And every year, as I said in the previous post, that this time around the four feasts, uh, Jesus and the ancient Jews and the Jew, uh, Jewish people today, uh, they prepare themselves for 40 days in fasting and praying, seeking God's face, seeking His presence for, uh, in those 40 days, asking forgiveness and making a right. And this was built in for that, for this time frame. And uh, the reason also why they were fearing this feast because they know God is going to judge. Ju uh, the judgment will come. Now the Israelites came to the desert of Zimne. There was no water and the community turned against Moses and Aaron. And Moses and Aaron went to the tent meeting and prostrated themselves before God. God told uh, Moses and Aaron to gather the assembly and speak to the rock. He needed to speak to the rock. Water would, uh, 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 water would come forth. Moses took the staff and gathered all men. Then then seemingly in anger, Moses said to him, Listen, you rebels, must we bring water out of this rock? Then Moses struck the rock twice with his staff. Numbers 20 verse 10 to 11. Then the most of you do know, do know that. Then um, water came from the rock as God had promised. 
but God immediately told Moses and Aaron that because they failed to trust him enough to honor him as a holy, a holy, a holy God, they would not bring the children of Israel into the promised land. That is verse 12, of course. Now the punishment may seem severe to all of us, but when we look closely at Moses' action, we see several mistakes. Most uh, uh, obviously, Moses disobeyed a direct command from God. God had commanded Moses to speak to the rock. Instead, Moses struck the rock with his staff. Earlier, when God brought water from the rock, he instructed to, uh, uh, Moses to, uh, to strike it with a staff. That is in Exodus 17. And that always bothered me. Now, why would he uh, do that? But this time, God didn't tell him to strike the rock, but God told him to speak to the rock. God gave him a new instruction, a new instruction. And sometimes we don't see that instruction and we don't obey that instruction. But God's instructions were different, uh, 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 different here. God wanted Moses to trust him, especially after they had been in such close relationship for so many years. And so do God want us to trust him with our, with our healing. And many people took the, the, the poison, the poison, instead of trusting God for that. And that alone, that people, that defiled those people's bodies. And that is a big, uh, big issue there. God wanted Moses to trust him especially after that, in such close relationship for most many years. Moses didn't need uh, to uh, use force. He simply needed to avoid, uh, obey God's uh, uh, God and know that God would be true to his promise. Now also Moses took the credit for bringing forth the water. He asked the people gathered at the rocks, must we bring the water out of this rock? Number 20, uh, 10 emphasized that was the edit. Uh, Moses seemed to be taking the credit for this miracle himself and I instead of uh, attributing it to God. And so many times we take the credit for ourselves. Uh, we we uh, pat it on the back for having a good message. But God should always get the glory for that. God is the one who gives us the revelation. God is, uh, the wisdom come always from God. God could not let it go unpunished and expect the Israelites to understand His holiness. The water, the water giving rock is used as a symbol here of Christ in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 4. The rock was struck in Exodus 17 6, 17, 6 just like Christ was crucified once. Hebrews 7 verse 27. But Moses speaking to the rock in Numbers could have been meant a picture of prayer. A picture of prayer. Jesus was struck once and he continued providing living water to those who prayed in faith to him. When Moses angrily struck the rock, he destroyed the biblical typology. In fact, crucified Jesus Christ again. You know, Moses' punishment for disobedience, pride, and misrepresentation of Christ's sacrifice was very steep. And the Bible also said, many are called, but only few are chosen. Not everyone that are looking for the rapture will go in the rapture, people. And that is serious. And many times I struggle with that myself. Will I be found worthy? Will I be in the rapture? Really serious. And today was such a day. <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah. And he, bar, he, bar, he was barred from entering the promised land. Numbers 20. Verse. And the promised land is uh, as, uh, as a symbol of the rapture, rapture that promise. 
Yet we do not see Moses complain about his punishment. Instead, he continued faithfully uh, 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 faith, to faithfully let the people and honor God. Now, in his holiness, God also has compassionate. He invited Moses up to Mount Nebo, where he showed his beloved prophet the promised land before his death. Now, that is the question. Now, many people say, yes, Moses and Elijah will be the two witnesses. I corner. Moses died in, uh, uh, in, in that land, you know, in Moab. He died there. And uh, Satan uh, uh, fought over his body, his dead body. Moses died. Yes, but I'm coming to that. I know your thought about the transfer. I'm coming to that in the middle. It will not be Moses. There are only two people that didn't die. God preserved their bodies. Preserved their bodies. That is Elijah and Enoch. They will be the two, two witnesses, the two prophets. Uh, the two prophets that will come back. Why? I couldn't get a, a God take a, a, a prophet of our day. Hmm. Because there's no more prophets, people. Yes, they are. Uh, you can speak a prophetic word. But a prophet was a spokesman for God in those days. And God, uh, these two uh, will again come as spokesperson for God here on the earth. Yeah. And Satan copies God. Somebody asked me the question about the false prophet. The false prophet, the, pub, the biblical false prophet on earth is a spokesman for Satan. For, uh, spoke, a spokesman for Satan. And he is a spokesman for the, for, for the Antichrist, uh, Satan's son. And that is who the false prophet is. He does everything. He sees to the mark of the beast. He sees to, to that type of thing. And he is the one that deceives, deceives the nations, even at this very moment. He is alive and well. He is the Jewish Messiah as well. Yeah, and he will have a contest with Elijah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land I promised an oath to Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. Yeah. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab. He is dead. And he will not be the two witnesses. Moses was raised from the dead in Matthew. Uh, uh, Matthew tw uh, 20, uh, 27, verse 50. He was one of those that were raised from the dead and went into the city. Mm -hmm. Not Elijah and Enoch, wasn't they? There is a turnaround to the story. And I told you that it was a transfiguration in the New Testament in Matthew 17. We read the story of Jesus' transfiguration before Peter, James and John on Mount Amen, the place where Satan will come down. And his fallen angels. Yeah. Where his fallen angels came down. At Mount Hermon. This is a place where Jesus revealed himself. To, uh, uh, to his disciples as well. And Satan always copies, copies God. And the biblical false prophet will also reveal himself. At this place. Hmm. Yeah. And then he will enter into that. But the the... Jewish rabbis also believe the biblical where, uh, where Messiah will die in battle. Yeah, that's right. So uh, that may come before Feast of Trumpets or just after Feast of Trumpets. But I believe it could be just shortly after Feast of Trumpets. We'll see about that. Now, yeah, and this is what it was right before uh, James John at Mount Hermon. When Jesus and Moses, uh, uh, Moses and Elijah, uh, where uh, uh, where was this mountain in Matthew? That was I said. That was in Mount Hermon. Moses stood with the glory wrapped around him on a hill, and he had never walked uh, walked on. He stood with Jesus, who would fulfill all the promises, people. Yes. So uh, God honored Moses at that transfiguration because he said 
May I see your glory. May I see your face. And Jesus, of course, did honor Moses in that regard. Other people uh, uh, share, uh, people share this video, share it with uh, uh, everyone, um, and be blessed. See you tomorrow evening.